tested. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Hallelujah. It's a brand new day that we have not seen before. Let us pray. Father God, in the spirit of Jesus, we have gathered one more time to glorify your name. And oh, Father God, we are lifting you up this morning. We are praising you because you are our Father, you are our God, and we love you, God. We are sanctified through your most Holy Ghost power. And oh Lord God Almighty, let the feeling of your desires flow amongst us. Give us what we need to celebrate your name this morning, Father God. For this is our joy. This is our satisfaction. In the name of Jesus, who is our Father, let the people of God say, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! hallelujah. And Hallelujah! Amen! Good morning. Happy Sunday to each and every one of you. And as we prepare ourselves this morning for our meditational moment, I'd just like to say that usually during the early part of the year, January, like around this time, we all like to refocus ourselves, reassess ourselves, look on the year that has passed, and try to focus on different things that we can do this year right here. So what I'd like to have each and every one of us to do is that from beginning this day, we can pray, we can fast, and we can meditate. Because during our meditational moments, no matter how long it is, this is our chance to listen to what God has having us to do our prayers. We, we pray to him. We say what we have to say. But then our meditation is when we sit. And we... So if we could just do that during this time so that we could just refocus, because without the prayer, without the fasting, without the meditation, how can we ask him to move mountains? Let us take our first. Hold it. And slowly release it. Let us take another deep breath in. Hold it. Another deep breath in. Hold it. And slowly release it. And let us just take a moment, just like I said, just so that we can just sit and just listen. Just listen to the stillness. Because when you're listening, it just takes away all the other noises, all the other, anything that's distracting you. And it just lets you focus on the quietness, the stillness, being able to think things out clearly. So let us just listen to the quietness just for a moment. Thank you. 
Let us remember to keep hearts of gratitude and thankfulness whenever we enter him. So another deep breath in. and slowly release it. Another deep breath in. Hold it. And slowly release it. And let's take a final deep breath in. Hold it and slowly release it. Namaste. God has been so good. He's been so good. He's been so good. He's been so good. Have I got a witness in the house? He has done great things for me. Great, great, great things. He's made a way for me, and I'm going to be a witness for him. He has done great things for me. Great things, great things. He has done great things for me. He has done great things for me. Great things, great things, he has done great things for me. Oh, let's sing that together. He has done, he has done great things for me. Great things, great things, he has done great things for me. He's made a way, he has made a way for me. Made a way, made a way, he has made a way for me. He has made a way, he has made a way for me. Made a way, made a way, he has made a way for me. I'm going to be a witness, I'm going to be a witness for him. Witness, witness. I'm gonna be a witness for him. Oh, let's do that again. I'm gonna be a witness. I'm gonna be a witness for him. Witness, witness. I'm gonna be a witness for him. I'm gonna let my little light shine. I'm gonna let my little light shine. Light shine, shine. I'm gonna let my little light shine. He has done great things. He has done great things for me. Great things, great things, oh, yeah, he has done great things, he has done great things for me, great things, great things, he has done great things for me. He's made a way, yes he has. He has made a way for me. Made a way, made a way, made a way. He has made a way for me. I'm gonna be a witness. I'm gonna be a witness for him. Witness, witness, oh, I'm gonna be a witness for 
for him. Play your organ, Brother Stevenson. has done great things for me, great things, great things, he has done great things for me, last time he's done great things, has done great things for me, great things, great he has done great things for me. He's done great things, done great things for me. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to work. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Oh, let's sing that together if we can. I love you. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice. Oh, 
let's take it up. Oh, oh, oh. we exalt thee. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. Oh, oh Lord. God, that you might move as only you can so that your people might be edified and together we might give glory to your name. We ask it now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. Let every heart say, Amen. 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 Namaste, my brothers and sisters in Christ. It is a blessing to be in God's house, whether it is in person or virtually. We acknowledge God's presence and we are thankful for your presence, uh, both in this place and online in the virtual sanctuary. Mount Airy, let's join and let's celebrate the brothers and sisters joining us online. We are thankful and grateful to God for uh, your presence, our disciples that are online. Uh, let's thank God for uh, Brother William, Pastor Praise Team. Can you all hear me well? Okay, there you go. I can hear myself better. All right. <clears throat> Nehemiah, the eighth chapter, beginning with verse 1 through verse 12. All the people came together as one in the square before the water gate. They told Ezra, the teacher of the law, to bring out the book of the law of Moses which the Lord had commanded for Israel. So on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women, all who were able to understand. He read it aloud from daybreak till noon. As he faced the square before the water gate in the presence 
of the men, the women, and others who could understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra, teacher of the law, stood on a high wooden platform built for the occasion. Beside him on his right stood Matthia, Shinma, Aniah, Uriah, Hikiah, Monessa, and on his left were Pedoia, Meshon, Micaiah, Heshon, Heshbedom, Zechariah, and Mishalom. Ezra opened the book. All the people could see him because he was standing above them. And he opened it, and the people all stood up. Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen, Amen. And they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. The Levites, Jeshua, Bani, Shebiah, Jamin, Echab, Shebetiah, Hedeah, Manasseh, Kidla, Azariah, Jezebah, Hanan, and Peleah instructed the people in the law while the people were standing there. They read from the book of the law of God, making it clear and giving the meaning so that the people understood what was being read. Then Nehemiah, the governor, Ezra the priest, and the teacher of the law, and the Levites who were instructing the people said to them all, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people had been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. Nehemiah said, Go and enjoy food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared. The day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The Levites calmed all the people, saying, Be still, for this is a holy day. Do not grieve. Then all the people went away to eat and drink, to send portions of food to celebrate with great joy, because they now understood the words that had been made known to them. Thank you, Lord. For saving my soul, thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you. Thy great salvation, so rich and so free. Sing with me. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you. Saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and so free. Amen. 
that's been on my spirit for a while. I'm thankful and grateful to God for God's expression of salvation. Amen, amen. Verse 10, Nehemiah said, Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks, and send some to those who have nothing prepared. The day is holy to the Lord. Do not dream, grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. For the writer of this book opens the eighth chapter announcing that the people of God have assembled themselves in Jerusalem near the water gate on the first day of the seventh month. There are men, there are women, there are children present. Most of them are gathered, uh, have participated in the building that some said would never be built. Many in the assembled crowd did their part to accomplish the assignment that was laid before them. They faced threats and intimidating tactics. Some of their own people sought to discourage and discredit their efforts. They became tired and fearful during the process of the rebuilding. Some wanted to give up. Yet they were reminded that the assignment given to them was larger than themselves. And in spite of the setbacks, discouragements, and disappointments, with God's help and Nehemiah's and others' organizing leadership, they did it. They rebuilt the broken walls of Jerusalem. And yet, not everyone present at the Watergate actually participated in the rebuilding project. For there were also those present who did not lift a finger to help, uh, but are now enjoying the fruit of other people's labor. They are present early in the morning. Sun is just coming up. They're gathered as a unified people with a public purpose. And that purpose is to engage in a worship experience as they listen to the words of God as found in the book of the law of Moses. For more than enough of them recognized that the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem uh, was not the end of their work, but rather just a step in the right direction toward the restoration of the holy city of Jerusalem. And so rebuilding the wall uh, was a means to an end and not just an end in and of itself. And so ultimately the people wanted a closer walk with their God. The rebuilding of the wall was really a pathway for which they could manifest the purpose that God had for them in this season. They wanted to be in tune uh, with their creator and in step with the one who would order their steps and their stops. They had been through so much and had experienced some such stress and trauma that before they would move on with their mission, they needed to spend some time with the words of the Lord that would open them up to worship. They realized that they couldn't be in such a hurry to move on uh, from the accomplishment, but every now and then they had to linger and reflect upon what God had done in their midst. And somebody in the crowd, the people, had the good sense to know uh, that the rebuilding of the wall was, yes, a good action, but that action was connected with an awesome God. They had to engage and open themselves up to the worship. And so they had some questions that God's word could answer. They had some wounds that only God's word could heal. They had some distraction that only God and God's word could give them. And, and I do know that like the people in this text, you and I, gather at this water gate called Mount Airy in person and online. 
We gather week after week because we too made it through and have accomplished what many have said we could not do. We are here. Uh, I know what I've gone through and I know you know what you have gone through in this season. Uh, we are building and rebuilding community even in the midst of this pandemic. We're trying to figure out how we can still maintain our faith even through these fuzzy times in which we live. We are gathered from various backgrounds and experiences, having achieved uh, on our jobs and at our schools and in our homes and within our communities. And in the face of setbacks and setups and in the face of plots and problems, we have pressed our way through despite the discouragements, the dangers and the difficult days that are ahead. We are still doing the work of our God, even as we are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. We're still doing the work of ministry, even as voter registration and, and voter restriction and suppression laws have been put in place to make it more difficult for black and brown people to do. We are still doing the work of ministry, even though once again, there are unanswered questions uh, when it involves black and brown young people in terms of their death, uh, that some of us are going to investigate even more as would happen in the case of our sister here in Bridgeport. We are still doing the work of ministry on behalf of God who is our banner and our rock. We have rebuilt lives and legacies for ourselves and our people and our God. And yet, as we gather in this place and via social media, because we realize like the people of our text in the hustle and bustle of building and rebuilding amid the swift pace of our lives, we need to meet at the water gate to hear the words of our God. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. The words of God can speak peace in the midst of our storms. The words of God can heal our wounded spirits. The words of God can lift heavy hearts. The words of God can assure our anxious minds. The word of God can calm our fears. And so I'm thankful that God calls us together, uh, whether we have been working on rebuilding the walls or not, whether we have done our active part or whether we have shrunk in fear because uh, we are going through what we believe is a once in a century experience. Because the truth of the matter is, depending on where uh, we are on our life's journey, our own woundedness can cause us uh, uh, to attempt to block something or someone instead of building and rebuilding. We might just find ourselves being blessed and benefited from something or someone we battled, someone or uh, someone we initially doubted. Somebody ought to shout there, you need to thank God for God's grace and mercy. That out of all the blessings we have, because we have deserved it and earned it, not all the blessings we have, because we knew they were blessings from the jump. Some of us knew, uh, some of us thought the blessings were actually burdened. Some of us thought that the blessings were actually do uh, something to undermine our purpose and undermine our well-being. But we kept journeying with the Lord and that which we thought was a burden actually turned out to be a blessing. That which we thought threatened us actually helped move, move us forward. And so now we can say thank God because God, your grace and mercy was there even when I thought you, even when I didn't believe you, even when I was skeptical, you were still still building me and making me. And so the people in this text, like us, we believe that there are some destructive insights for us as we navigate our way through these challenging times. For within this text, people have a deep desire to hear the words of God that are found within the books of Moses. 
which has been wisely considered to be made into the Pentateuch of the first five books of our Christian Old Testament. And so the people called Ezra the priest and the teacher of the law to come and remind them of the words which will bring them life. Ezra met the people early in the morning. Somebody say early. Early in the morning. The text says that it was at daybreak. And that is around five or six in the morning. He stood up on the wooden platform specifically made for the occasion. He is there along with six persons on his right and seven persons on his left. Now the text doesn't let us know uh, much about them other than their names that I butchered up a little bit, but I tried to do my best with them. They were standing with him in support as he prepares to offer the words of God to the people of God. Maybe uh, they were his intercessors or maybe uh, they just were still with him so that he knew he was not alone while he read the word of God, which tells me that, yes, it's good to hear. Uh, it's good to have the resolve to go and to stand even when others are not around you. Yet the truth of the matter is uh, to stand and to deliver the words of God. We all need somebody to lean on. Preach, Bennett. And indeed, the people are eagerly awaiting the words of God for as Israel opened up uh, the book to read uh, we see in verse 5, as he opened it up, the people all stood up. Now let, 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 let me say that while God's word is still God's word, whether we are standing or whether we are seated, uh, and, and while uh, we uh, can be just as respectful of the word while we're sitting as while we are standing, I've noticed that sometimes when a person is hungry and really needs a word from the Lord, something inside of them perks up in attention uh, so that whether they are sitting or standing, their focus and attention is on hearing what the Lord has already said uh, so that the Holy Scriptures and the Holy Spirit can remix it for them right where they are. What do I mean by that? If you understand where these people are, uh, they did not have access to a tablet. They did not have access uh, to a canonized Bible. And so when they were finally able to hear the word of God, they did not take the word of God for granted. They recognized that the word of God had weight to it. The word of God had a sense of, of coming alive. The word of God they had a sense of God's divine power attached to it. It wasn't like reading someone else's word. It was reading God's breath, God's breath. And so, brothers and sisters, they understood uh, that it was something important. You see, brothers and sisters, I pray, I pray in my own life, I pray in your life, that we never become too comfortable with the word of God where we say, oh, I heard that before. Well, my brother, my sister, uh, I don't know about you, but every time God speaks, I need to hear him. Every time God speaks, I need because just like you, I go through it. I go through my trial and tribulation. And it, no matter how often times I hear the word of God, I thank God that it's fresh for me. I thank God that it renews my strength. Huh. Text says, huh. at the beginning of the reading, verse 6, it tells us that Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen, Amen. And they bowed down and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Now, what we see is that Ezra's praise led to the people's worship. There was a lot of call and response where praise and worship went hand in hand. Where the praise of the words of God can lead to the worship of God. 
See, it's not one or the other, it's both praise and worship. As we praise God for the word of God, then it opens up a portal for us to worship as we understand is nobody like God who can speak words to soothe our doubts and calm our fears. And check this out, y'all. They are not praising and worshiping God for a house, for a car, for clothes, they're not even praising God for the wall being built. Because each of them know that those things can come and go. See, they are praising God for the words of God. And somebody knows it's the words of God uh, that gets you through when the car is gone, when the folk are acting funny, when you can't wear the clothes anymore, and when what you have built has been torn down. And so the text says, <clears throat> they are standing and praising and bowing and worshiping. And as Ezra begins to read the word of God from the laws of Moses, books, uh, he reads from daybreak until about noon, from about five till about 12 noon. Yeah, that's about seven hours. Some of us get fidgety as I was reading just those 12 verses. All right, move on, Pastor, move on. You tried, you tried, baby, you tried, baby, move on. So can you imagine for seven straight hours hearing the word of God? And as he is reading, the people are still worshiping. Yet, within their worship, there is also weeping. Mm. Mm. They are worshiping, and yet, they are also weeping. They are weeping as they listen to Ezra recount the ways in which their ancestors obeyed and disobeyed God. They're listening to the stories of their forefathers and foremothers. They're listening to how God kept them when they were right and corrected them when they did wrong. They're listening to how God kept them while enslaved in Egypt and how God led them through the wilderness. They are listening to how in spite of of how God kept them while enslaved and how in spite of all that God had done, how they turned their back on God and started complaining about the wilderness and romanticizing their time in oppression in Egypt. Uh, see, they are listening to all of the commands that God gave their ancestors to follow and how far their ancestors strayed from those commands. They are listening to how their ancestors, and some of them, became so apathetic to their faith and culture and history that when King Nebuchadnezzar and his armies came to destroy the walls of Jerusalem, it caught them by surprise. They are listening to Ezra read, and their emotions are overcome with grief, sorrow, regret, and shame, for they are still in worship experience. Yet you could not distinguish their tears of joy from their tears of grief. And let it be known, my brothers and sisters, tears of joy and tears of sorrow can occur in the same place at the same time. Uh, and at the time at the water gate, it could have been a time uh, of just regret of how far the people have strayed from the words of God. And yet the hope in the story, brothers and sisters, is found in that while Ezra was reading the Levites, those who would assist in the temple, they moved amongst the people helping to make clear what they read. In other words, 
God's Holy Spirit used them to help clarify, to help make it plain and understandable for all who were hearing. And one of the reasons, brothers and sisters, we need community and particularly another, uh, we, we need one another is because none of us knows everything. And if we're not careful, the enemy uh, will use our emotions of fear, of regret, and shame to misinterpret God's word to condemn us rather than convict us and correct us and construct us. What do I mean by that, preacher? Well, what I mean by that is the reason why the Levites were m m moved amongst the people, the reason why the Holy Spirit moves amongst us from this pulpit to your ears is because sometimes when you hear the preacher talk uh, if, you're, if you're not careful you will get stuck on what you've done wrong you will get stuck on what somebody else has done wrong you will get stuck on what you've missed you will get stuck on what was not done right rather than realize you've survived it all whether you did what was right or whether you did what was wrong you are still here right now I've learned that some of the best way of healing is when you learn how to thank God that God's grace and mercy help you release help you take help you let it go every now and then you need to hear it so you can process it so you can let it go God says don't hold on to it just realize when you come up with somebody else who's going through the same thing rather than saying tis 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 how could you say hey I know what you feel brother sister I know where you've been brother sister thank God for God's mercy thank God for God's grace thank God that we are here and we have another chance And so in verse number nine, Ezra and the Levites collectively spoke to the people. This day is holy to the Lord, separate <clears throat> to the Lord our God. Do not mourn or weep. Instead, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks. Not, not Kool-Aid, though. Not Kool-Aid. Not, not, not Liza Aid. No, no, no. And send some to those who have nothing prepared. For this day is holy <coughs> to our God. So do not grieve. For the joy of the Lord <laughs> is your strength. Then, huh, listen, listen, listen. This is a holy day. Which says... There is time and space that God will give you and me to grieve. And yet there are moments when we hear the word of God, God says in that moment, don't preoccupy yourself with grief because you are now in the presence of God's words and the presence of God's words ought to give you the joy to realize that it's not ultimately on you but the words of God have greater weight than whatever you are going through and so instead of your weariness instead of your weeping you ought to thank God that the joy of the Lord is in your life because the joy of the Lord is your strength when you don't have strength. The joy of the Lord is your power when you don't have power. The joy of the Lord is your direction when you don't have direction. Yes, weeping may endure for a night, but somebody knows that joy comes in the morning. I think I've got a few witnesses in here. There's seasons where you grieve. There's seasons where your heart is heavy. But every now and then, you need to hear the Lord say, put your grieving in its place. But you need to thank God for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord keeps you moving. Keep you stepping up, keep you trusting up, keep you hoping up. Is there anybody in here up who says, up, I shall not die, up, but I shall live up, and declare up, the joy up, of the Lord? Up. I'm thankful up, 
for what I've been through, uh, but I'm thankful uh, for the joy that got me through. Uh, I'm thankful uh, for the strength of the Lord uh, that is with me, uh, for I love the Lord. Uh, he heard my cry uh, and pitied uh, every groan. Uh, say yes. I'm done. Got a little bit more, but that's enough for today. I need you to hear this. It says, the Levites went amongst the people and said, be still. Go out. I know... <coughs> There's a lot of uncertainty. We built the wall, but the enemy is still out there. And some of you may be crying because you don't know how you're going to make it. But the Levite said, be still. Get you something to eat. Have some sweet drink. Have some spirit. Now, Pastor ain't saying go out and get you some Knob Creek. That Pastor ain't saying go get you some Knob Creek. Pastor ain't saying get you some Knob Creek. Pastor ain't. And y'all laughing. Y'all know what that Knob Creek is, huh? I ain't saying go get that. <clears throat> but I'm saying what the text says. Steal yourself. Steal yourself. Now you can steal yourself even when everybody else is panicking. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? It's an Omicron. It's a Delta Omicron. What are we going to do? The word of God says, steal yourself. Whatever it is, God is going to help us navigate it. Whatever it is, God is going to help us. I was talking with some folk here. I was talking with some folk. And none of us, none of us want to lose loved ones, want loved ones in ourselves because of this pandemic. And we need to do whatever we can do to keep ourselves safe. But my brother, my sister, hear me as your pastor, hear me as a man of God, hear me as a, as a man seeking his own faith journey. There comes a point that you got to say, God, my life is in your hands. I'm going to do everything I need to do, but God, I can't live in the fear of not living. I've got to be willing to live. And I think that's why you're here. That's why you're here. You're not foolish. You're not crazy. You're not unreasonable. But in your own way, you're saying by your presence, you're saying by your presence online, God, don't know what's going to happen, but I got to trust you and I got to have the joy of the Lord in, I got to live. My children, they don't need to see me living in fear. They, they need to see, they don't need to see church folk living in fear. I don't say, I didn't say we don't have fear. We all got fears. But there's a difference between having fear and living in that fear. And God is saying to each of us, wrestle with your stuff, but don't let, don't let what you're wrestling with stop you from experiencing the joy of the Lord, getting you some food, and celebrating the word of God and the accomplishments that the word of God has wrought in your life. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe you're here. You would say, Pastor, this is my word. This is my word because I realize that I have been able to do my part to accomplish some things. And yet when I hear the word of God, sometimes it brings about a remembrance of what I didn't do, a remembrance of 
how, how far I've fallen. And I'm thankful that there are Levites, there are men and women that are in our midst that will say, yes, you need to face some of your failures. Yes, you need to own some of the mistakes, but don't, don't let those things imprison you. Don't let them keep you back from celebrating what God has done in your life. Thankful for those who come in our lives and help make the scriptures clear so that we can release unnecessary shame, guilt, regret. And we can hear another group of people reminding us, be still, this is God's holy day. Don't grieve in the sense of, don't allow your moments in prayer and worship and praise to keep you focused on what you've lost. Remember what you still have, and that is you still have a Savior, a Savior who still loves you, a Savior who will still provide for you, and a Savior who will still give you peace, peace to move forward. Thank you, God, for those who've lifted their hands. Thank you for those who lift their hearts in person and online to you. God, I ask in your name that you be the joy that is our strength, that we navigate these moments not in fear, but in faith that you will direct our paths. Thank you for this community called Mount Airy, both online and in person. Thank you for these men and women. This week of prayer is a, a week of praying for our leaders. God, so we lift up the men and women who sacrifice time, talent, and their treasure so that the ministry of rebuilding these walls, the ministry of praise and worship, the ministry of clarification and the ministry of encouragement and challenge can go forward. Thank you, God, for each person, whether they are in person or online. Thank you for the way in which they have made so many sacrifices for this congregation. And I thank you, God, for them. God, as we have been praying and will pray throughout this week, we pray for the renewal, the replenishment, of our leaders, God. We pray as we acknowledge these leaders have been faithful and yet, like many of their colleagues across this land, there is a sense of leadership weariness. <clears throat> and so God, we ask that you might renew their strength. Renew them, replenish them. Help them to know that their, their contributions make a difference. Now God, we also pray for the emerging leaders. We pray there are leaders, men and women online and men and women in person who you have tapped in their spirit. Yes, I wanna make a greater contribution to this ministry, yes, even in my limited time, I want to be able to do something to move the ministry forward. God, we pray that you touch them to reach out, even if we can't reach out to them. I pray that they might reach out to us so that together we might continue to do the work that you've assigned our hands in this place. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that we will hold on to the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. God, I pray again for every person. I pray for those who are going through bereavement. Touch them, be with them as only you can. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, we lift up those who may have shed tears out of shame and guilt. God, help them that they might transform those tears of shame and guilt into tears of joy, knowing they have been forgiven. They have been set free. 
So help them to release themselves, God, so that they can continue to do the work that you've assigned their hands. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. I ask that you prepare your elements. Brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. I want to thank you and, and praise you to your grace, your grace and mercy brought me through. God, we thank you for loving us and meeting us even at our point of brokenness. And as we celebrate this sacrifice, we know it was because you were broken for us that we can be made whole to Jesus. The power of the blood is that it seals our salvation. And because of God's love, nothing can separate us from the love of God to Jesus. Mercy brought me through. One more time. Your, your grace and mercy brought me through. Brought me through. I'm living. I'm living this moment because because of you. And I want. I want to thank you and praise you too. And your grace, your grace and mercy brought me through, brought me through. Your grace, your grace, your grace and mercy brought me through, brought me through. I'm living, living. Moment because because of you and I want I want to thank you and praise you too and your grace your grace and today on today we thank God for the word of God thank God for the people of God uh, we want to lift all the families that are going through bereavement in prayer um, Desmond Gamble the loss of his father uh, Reverend Maxine Plummer on the loss of her cousin uh, Stevenson uh, on the loss our own Stevenson on the loss of his grandmother uh, Manya Payne on the loss of her um, uncle we lift the Bridgeforth and Mebane family. This week we celebrated the life of Brother Frank Eugene Bridgeforth, a longtime disciple here of Mount Airy. Um, he was 90 plus years young, and amen. We honor his life and all those that have lost their life. Amen. Um, <clears throat> this coming Sunday, we will have consecration of all of our leaders. Uh, this week we are in um, fasting uh, mode. We ask those who will join us if you will uh, give up uh, 
forego one meal a day. Um, and in that time, in that season, pray for renewal and, and rejuvenation of the existing leaders of Mount Airy and pray um, for the emerging leaders, those uh, who may be in the pew and the online who believe God has contribution for them to make in this ministry, particularly in this hybrid uh, era that we're living in, both online and in person, um, that they may take the initiative to reach out to us um, as at times, uh, even now, uh, this, this is, we were teasing each other yesterday. Now, right now, you all can see me online, but, uh, but I can't see you. So um, what, uh, what I need then is for you, if the Lord has called you, you believe the Lord has called you uh, to participate and or provide levels of, uh, of leadership within our congregation, I need you to reach out uh, to us just so let us know. Amen, amen, amen. Um, Connect Assembly will be on the 27th, which is Thursday. You can register on our Facebook page and at our website. I shared it on last week. We've given over a decade uh, in service to, or more than a decade, uh, in service to building uh, a new Connecticut through Connect. And we've had tremendous accomplishments. And yet with any organization, um, there is a sense of needing to disorganize, reorganize, that we might do even more. And so uh, a part of our assembly is just assessing where we are. Uh, and we hope, uh, I think Mount Airy, we had 60. We have 60 people, uh, either virtually, uh, uh, well, it'd be virtual, that we'll look for you all to sign up. Please sign up. Um, as Mount Airy has been a leader in that organization since its beginning. Amen. Uh, COVID kits will be available again. And if you know people who would want a, a COVID testing kit, please let us let them uh, know to come to the church. Um, we're going to try to mass distribute them on Sundays, but during the week, if they need one, if you know someone, please, we have plenty of testing kits. Amen. 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 Um, again, let us thank, we thank you for all of your trusting God for your financial contributions in our um, leadership session yesterday, which was a powerful hybrid, both people online and people in person, um, about 50 of us there. And um, we had uh, some good discussion, good, honest kind of conversation about how this pandemic has infected our lives as well as how we do ministry. Uh, and yet the, the opportunities and blessings that God has given us in the midst of this um, has just been amazing. And we're thankful and grateful to God uh, for those opportunities. Um, and we ask that if you uh, have been giving, thank you and please continue to give. If you haven't given up to um, what you know your tithing ability is, uh, we ask that you pray and trust God uh, because we believe it's in that psalm that says you can't beat God giving and God will, God will provide even as we take care of God's house. Amen. I think that's it. I do want to share this. Um, <clears throat> some of you all know it is, I don't know if I've not been connected to the family, but uh, I'm thankful that a new generation, um, uh, it's an amazing thing now. I am, I am, I was once, I was once young, and I still like to think I'm young. Grr. <laughs> but when I was all out in the streets, all this stuff, uh, but I'm thankful, unfortunately, I'm thankful that there's a new generation taking um, the lead. Um, and some of you all know there's a local story that has received national attention. Uh, the death of Lauren Smith Fields. Um, she was the young lady, 23 year old, I believe, uh, today. Today is her birthday. And um, there's going to be a rally and a march today in her honor. Uh, march from police. Uh, 
department to the Morton Center. Um, we, if you can go, please go represent Mount Airy and we're going to try have a few other things happening, but we're going to look to try to uh, swing through at some point um, this afternoon. It's starting again at the police department and it's going to go to uh, the Morton, um, Margaret Morton Center, Government Center. 1.30, yep, at 1.30. Um, I think Shanice, she knows, so she, she's connected to that team. So we'll look to hear, uh, hear from her, follow the lead of some of our young people. Amen? Amen. Amen. And support them where we can. Amen. I think that is it. That is it. Amen. Let us stand. Let us stand. Again, we thank God for our ushers. Come on, thank God for our ushers, our security team, our nurses and our nurses and first aid. Thank God for them. Meditation leader. Amen. Thank God for our musicians, our audio. Give it up for our audio. All right. Please don't forget as you go out the door to pick up your uh, kit. Ushers will and, and security will direct you. Amen. Amen. Always remember Jesus. Always keep him on your mind. power. We're praying people with a powerful witness of the perfect God. God bless you. Go in peace and power. Please go forth, pick up a kit. See you this week.